Powered Solar Crest AM. Can't wait to see Goodness. it. 2024. <laughs> when this matchup against the face as well is very it's very insane, you know, sometimes you know you you think the void should have some advantage, but you make a mistake with the chrono, then the AM just gonna take over the map. Void doesn't really build a lot of uh, intelligence items, so you get you, you lose all your mana quickly against the AM. Yep, let's see how are they gonna start the game. The last time we had like some 2 1 2 setup, you know. Two heroes going top to steal the rune, two heroes go bot bottom to steal the rune, and let's see if they do the same thing. So VP is kind of doing the same thing. Two heroes bot, uh, two heroes mid, one hero is trying to approach from top, which is uh, Kiritich. But they know. Namiga know, they they find him, they see him. Yeah, and Kiritich. Yeah, we'll just time walk back into the river, he'll be fine. They also have located a ward. Uh, uh, no. Nope. Your admiral is on board. <laughs> the battle we can really too much action here. I'll scream. He's gonna be fine. You don't really want to have to take X level one on a Kunkka. That feels like a little bit of a grief, so we're in just two apiece here. Winter. A little bit of the grief. A little, a bit, little of grief. bit of a grief. It's like it's almost as bad grief. as uh, Dark Seeker Vacuum level one. Uh, Dark Seeker Vacuum? Nah, Xbox is worse than Dark Seeker level one. Really? Vacuum. Vacuum does what? 100 damage? 90 damage? That's true. I remember casting a game with you where the Dark Seer took a vacuum level one to try and get first blood. It didn't get first blood, and then <laughs> just lost the game, basically, with that full decision. Can't wait to see this ogre Kanka lane. <laughs> the last denying creeps. Oh my god, he has two denies. And surely his, his HP is not gonna really be able to sustain through this much harass, right? It just seems excessive. Dumb luck passive as well. Gotta love it. Lively now. Your admiral is on board. So funny as well. Receives mana from strength. Ugh, what a hero. I love the rework though, honestly. Probably one of the, the cooler things they've done in Dota. That's probably gonna be take a while for that mid lane to pop up, but he is six and three, so you know. <laughs> so far so good for the mid lane ogre. So there is a hero that doesn't have agility, there's a hero that doesn't have strength, and there's a hero that doesn't have intelligence. Balance. You know all three of them? Yeah, it's uh, Tiny who doesn't have any uh, agility. I'm trying to think mm -hmm. of a hero that doesn't have any strength. Hold on, you're throwing me for a bit of a loop here, actually. <laughs> I actually might be wrong. A hero with zero strength? I don't think Not so. zero strength. I mean, I was thinking of Medusa. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know what? <laughs> that That's that's true. She, she, does she have a strength gain? You're right, I'm looking this up now, actually. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I, uh, Zero, yeah. <laughs> yeah, wow, look at you. Look at you. My brain's still working. Zero plus zero, not bad at all. Very good point. Yeah, in a heads up call there. That's a really good piece of trivia, not gonna lie. Step lively now. I wonder Your if you have all three of them on one team. What would you call it? Team I don't know. And then you have a more thing there. I can't come up with it. They, they are truly universal. <laughs> like that together they are anyway right i mean dota feels like it's in a very nice place right now like a lot of very different heroes uh, we've seen so far a lot of different uh, strategies and i mean people are complaining about like oh everybody just buys bill you know but every patch is always going to be an item that people are trying to abuse Wonder, I can't right now we are Speaking to the mic. Yes, sir. You, you know my habits well. <laughs> I do. Yes. I'm to try to cover, uh, next time I'll try and correct you more subtly. But I wanted to hear what you were saying because I think you're right. Every patch there is always a, an item of the month, a flavor of the month. I think so far, you know, we're still pretty early into the patch. I'm eager to see perhaps at the main event of this uh, Dream League season 22 on. Well, it's not on land, but up for the online portion. Uh, I'm looking forward to see what the teams bring because I suspect there's more to figure out about this patch.
yeah, a lot more. Everything's changing, you know. Every day I'm like watching the pub games. Uh, a lot of uh, new things that I've been noticing. So now we have the mid plot work that seems to be like a thing. And there's this ogre. Uh, that guy is like obviously this art water Mipo. People already know that. Just can't wait to explore, you know. Every day it's, it's a different thing. And you have to keep up uh, with uh, the pace of how the game is evolving if you want to continuously win your pub games. Uh, we'll be able to actually beat Nikki Cool here to this. Uh, does he have a point in X? He does. I don't think he quite has the cast. Not in range. It, so yeah, yeah, pitiful range at level one. But could have been pretty punishing there to pick up both bottom lanes. Not the case here. Yep. So looking at the side lane, seems like Yam's getting decent farm. It's a Moon Ranger. 18 to 16, not too bad for the AM. Not pretty Mag good. Magnus here. is actually getting kind of dumpstered by Pace's Void. That's a lot different. Pretty. Wow, pretty that's pretty. actually a pretty big difference. 12 to 9 to 3. Yeah, yeah. What is actually going on in, in this lane? Is the SG just stacking? What did he do? There's no stacks. I don't know. And they just kind of lost the lane. <laughs> it just seems like they, they spent a lot of their mana early trying to bully out the Pugna. Their teach built a pretty decent lead there. Did get a single point now in the time dilation. And I think that's actually kind of punishing for someone like a Magnus, to be honest. Shadow Demon, sir. Especially against Shadow Demon. But I, I think it's deceptively strong against Mag too, right? Ooh, first Blood is going to be down bottom, though. Notice is actually very far from the lane as well. This is maybe going to be a second kill. Seems like probably Radiant not. Blink in two more fortified. seconds. Should be just fine. What's that fortify for? I wonder. Can't quite be sure. We'll take along down oh, here. Bottom one. Oh that of that is now. not good. We've got a frostbite. They have a crystal nova. This should be a pretty easy kill. And indeed it will be. Really impactful moment there. <laughs> as uh, they run far from the lane. But get a big piece out from that one. Nikki Cool not takes it out to the mid lane. Oh, oh, level oh. 6 uh, Kanka. Alright, so Anti Mage got a kill, Kunkka got a kill. Nice. Uh, Probably no here. See though. No, so I think the more valuable one is the Ogre kill on the Kunkka. She killed the enemy mid laner. I think that was the overall hero that got the most out of that exchange. It means that it might actually bleed into the side lanes because Kunkka is very high level now, so he, he will probably be rotating a lot earlier compared to the Ogre. Ogre is more like a, I guess a greedier one. Ooh. He wants to sit and farm. Rotation, FNG, they have the wave here. There is a TP coming through as Nether well. Ward. Hellstream is joining the fight now. Maiden saved briefly here by the disruption. Does not buy her any time for a spell, unfortunately. She's going to go down to the Nether Warrior. That means Hellscream can't really throw poison here either, as he is going to go down the right click damage of Notice. Yep, very, very nicely done by FNG on the Pugna. Coming through the pin gate, the wave is pushing. Squadix is here too. I want this tower. Shiroon. Thanks for the tower. All right, that is actually the perfect room for this situation. The tower's just down in seven minutes. I think it's just gone. Holy crap. Radiance yeah. bottom tower Simply gone. Attack. Ogre, you know, did not have the wagon to really Radiance play with there, so unable to really get that same amount of impact in. As Wisdom Runes will go one apiece here, by the way. Checking up on levels very quickly. Seems like VP have a pretty decent lead, honestly, with Kiritich and Sayush both level 5. As far as net worth, things are looking pretty favorable for them as well. They also have this sharpshooter into life drain, into boat, uh, and power shot into early chronos. Things are looking up for them here. It's going to be a basically free kill onto Ike. No, which he can really do there, unfortunately, even Ike. against a hoodwing. Is that it? Yeah, I mean, CM already said that CM's going to have a, a tough time in this lane. It's quite a miracle that they were able to get two kills in the previous exchange when they were chasing down the green in the jungle. So yeah, I mean, go pick up a haste rune. Should be able to get FNG here. Well, nope, deciding not to go. Two stacks of it. They didn't really want to die to Nether Ward, it seems. So we'll be taking things a bit easier. There's an India. RP. Looks like there was a skewer back as well on the tower for Kir onto Kiritich. But again, that time dilation slow. I'm telling you, man, this is a this is a hero Magnus where anytime he wants to get aggressive, he needs to start using his spells. 
Mm. He's just turning for the Chrono. Someone's TPing into this Chronosphere. It is actually going to be uh, the Kunkka. They see him immediately into the RP now, just trying to hold him back. Sayush looking to throw the pushback. He's going to at least find the Ogre. In comes now the boat. X marks the spot. That's going to be where Zeneca falls. He's got at least a kill onto FNG here, but it seems like Nikki Cool is going to take what is, in my opinion here, Winter, a very costly death now. This Ogre. Sure, creating a little bit of space, creating kind of a lot of space, to be honest, on this death, but this is your mid laner going down a second time now. The space for the AM is not even farming the lane. Getting chase. Oh boy. Four seconds. Available soon. Just trying to break vision. We did a pretty good job here and had the stick charges. He's fine. Kind of scary though. He's fine, but he's not hitting creeps, Richie. What do you do? anti mage not hitting creeps, that's uh, very, very bad news for Amigo. Max Mark, onto the Magnus here. No bow though. Right, decent disruption, but still gonna, still gonna die. Just too much damage, really. Just way too much damage. Oh no, are they really gonna be able to steal the stack? I think they will. Big stack. Triple stack here. I mean, maybe that's what the Shadow Demon was up to. Small creeps are all gone. They will be able to defend this and aim the life of FNG, so that's something here. Oh my god, Ignite is so good early on. Look at that thing. You got like a, a double stack off on him. Yeah, he did. Okay. Multicast. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. I didn't know that you actually stack the damage on if you get a multicast on one target. Uh, you like don't it. stack it. it uh, what is this? Ignite hitting on an already effective unit adds to the burn duration. So it's just a long hey, it's, it's stacked. Yeah, but it's, it's Isn't not... Isn't it stacking? No, because stacking to me implies that like when you have two fluxes on you, you tick down twice as fast. This just adds to the duration. So it is double the damage. But, but it's kind of also stacking, right? No, it because... It doubles the duration. Because stack's different. A stack is different, right? That This would be like stacking... Like, think about it, like a Fury Swipes. If you stack Fury Swipes versus if you extend it. Very that different thing. Right, because a stack doubles the damage. It kind of does double the damage. No, but it damages over time. The, the DOT is still the same. Right? Yeah, but the total damage is double. Right, right, but, right, but that's irrelevant. The damage is still the same. <gasps> it's, I think it's more confusing. Hold on, they're going to get a kill here. Yeah, even committing the crosshair. Is he going to hit you on the sub here? Yep, he is. Oh my god, the triple bash? That's just ridiculous. Look, I mean, it's, it's semantics. In a way, it is doubling the damage. But for me, when you say doubling the damage... For a DOT? Okay, fine, fine, fine. I'm not gonna use stack, alright? Yeah. He's gonna extend, right? Extend. Refresh extend the duration. The duration. It's extend, because it's not really refresh, right? If it was a refresh, then it means something else entirely. Just have to get everything right. Look, all I'm saying is that that's not how stacks work in this game. Stacks of debuffs. That's not how they work. Step lively now. Your Admiral is on board. CM trying to start on FNG, but nope, FNG is gonna be just fine. Just wants to hit the tower. Here it comes the ogre. Pretty close. A lot of heroes here. Here, stop them. Big stuns as well. Boat's gonna come in. Arch wants to fight this. Notice keeping in, as is actually Sayu. To see what they can find. He already has a full blade mail online. Points. Get it. War Pine Raider is pretty good, but miss out on the ogre. Winter, uh, when you played Dota 1, did you ever walk into the Ogre camp and then get stunned by an Ogre Magi? I tell you, I've gotten stunned by a Centaur pretending to be a Centaur. That's hilarious. That's the, my <laughs> one regret of not playing Dota 1. I would do that all the time. <laughs> Notice here. Uh, he's dead, to be quite frank. Uh, they're not going to give the kill to Violin. Instead, it'll go to Nikki Cool. I mean, he, he needs it. The yeah. Ogre needs it. Yeah, he does kind of need to get recovered. Is he going to a Hand of Midas? He's probably online now. Yeah, he Much has it. Time to use your spell. No multi-cast. And then just go for the Midas on the creeps. So he just get, he just got a multi. So not a good time to use Midas. Throw a spell. Nope. No. 
You're supposed to use a spell, and if it's not a multi cast, then he, use your he, minus. He does, he's not. He's not an ogre mid special. <laughs> <you know? laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, it, it, it actually matters on this here. No, you are incredibly correct. It's not, uh, not an exaggeration. So what? When you have three and four x multicast, you wait like a really long time. Yeah, you just wait. You don't do it. If, if you get it, you just wait until you don't get it, and then try to use your minus. So what you, the the mechanic that you're referring to is the pseudo RNG mechanic in Dota, where basically it's like doing a loot chest. You know, the more you roll, loot the chest. higher your chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Valve wants it to be even eventually. Right? Dream, Valve disruption. Unfortunately, what it's waited on the boat. He will go down the chronosphere. Does catch two. They're gonna focus down the maiden first. Look at Zeneca as well. No shackles out there. The RP is gonna go on through as the AM not joining this fight. Has nothing to do with this one. The ogre is gonna live as well, but uh, scary moments here as DP taking a 6k net worth lead pretty early on in the game. Yeah, so it's like I mean, it's, it's like Basher Winter, where like Basher, you know, on a melee hero has a 10% or sorry, a 25% chance to bash. But uh -huh. realistically, what that boils down to is that on your first auto attack you have something like maybe an 18 percent chance and then on your second one some like over an average of four auto attacks you will right click, you will find a bash on one of them this is a big kill by the way and nikki cool is gonna get uh just caught out on the river frankly looking for the uh room so it means that like if you because your your logic actually works it's not actually gambler's fallacy um it, it, it it's actually how it works the only true random hero in the game is ck all the other heroes, I believe, have uh, the pseudo RNG. Pseudo random. Yeah. The other ones are like, you're right, where if you don't bash three times in a row, basically confirmed on your fourth hit, you are going to use, you are going to get a bash. Not 100%, but it would be very, very, uh, very unlikely because of the way that Valve plays with the numbers behind the scenes. This, this ensures a, a more fair and balanced game. So this is actually like a real thing. You know how like on Centaur, you right click the creep three times and then you wait and then you, you know, your first auto attack is going to bash. On other heroes, you auto attack maybe once or twice on a creep and then you save your auto attack. It might actually work. All right, Magnus is dead. <laughs> Pseudo RNG is one of my favorite uh, topics. Enough of mathematics. Dota is about. Eh, never mind. That's all. They call Dota it PRD. Actually... It's a very complex form. PRD. Yeah, PRD. Radiance top tower is under attack. Can you do that for like drop uh, probability? PRD. Uh, no, no, no. Because this is this is a mathematical thing. So I, I've actually found the formula here. For example, for Skull Dasher. So like I uh -huh. said, twenty-five percent chance on paper, but on the first attack. That you Radiance use from Skull Basher, you actually have a 17% chance. Then, on the <sighs> second attack, you have. So, that was. If you don't that was, bash. That was how, how many percent. Uh, how, the percentage that the Kotal would need to. Oh, extremely uh, would rare. I know exactly. You remember, you remember in Bali? Of course Kotal, I remember. Yeah. He bought the Basher, and then the first right he bashed the black hole. Yep. <laughs> So basically, like, yes, it, it sounds unfair. It sounds like the more you hit without bashing, the more chances of bash you're going to get. That's a, a nice kill there. Finally, one of the screwers going right, and the kill as well. being split by Nikki Cool. But the, but the idea is over a long period of time, basically over an entire game, when you average it down, you will have bashed one every four hits on an enemy. Right? And that's the idea behind Pseudo RNG. Mm -hmm. But you can abuse this in small instances by, like you say, kind of preparing the other So, yeah, it, it's a very unique thing. It's, it's really cool. I think you see that a lot with uh, PA as well. Does it work? Does it, well, PA, I, I PA is different now on ult, right? Alright, CM is going to die here. It's pretty aggressive out from Fairy Teach. Doesn't have an Aegis or anything. Um, yeah. but, but I like how he's just trying to posture on the enemy jungle, I mean the enemy ancients. They have a lead, they're trying to just, you know, take away the farm from the enemy instead of just farming your own side of the map. It's always a good concept, a good habit. I always say that Dota is a game where you need to, uh, you need to learn a lot of good habits in the game if you ever want to be good uh, or try to go pro, you know. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things that you, you just have to know by habit.
instead of just uh, thinking in the game what you should do. I do want to get back on topic because now I'm going down <laughs> a fandom. Wiki. No, I, it's just I started reading the, the things about true distribution. There's only a couple abilities that are. Uh, I got random. you down the rabbit it's, hole. It's, it's you... really a fascinating topic, actually. I think it would make for you know how sometimes Jenkins makes those videos for ESL, right? But oh, this is this He's mechanic. Mine. That's actually kind of a cool mechanic to explain. If it doesn't really affect too much, but it is kind of cool. And perhaps over, again, in in a, if you over a, an entire game, twenty five percent chance to bash. Very true. But if you put a magnifying glass on two or three hits at a time, you might be able to actually use that as almost a quote unquote guaranteed first hit bash. I don't know if it's worth the trouble, you know? A lot of pros will just, you know... I mean, sometimes it is. Sometimes it's very situational, that's all. It, re it refreshes up the, like, 10 seconds. No, no, no. So it's every four hits. It refreshes every time you bash. So that means it's very rare to bash twice in a row, but it's also very rare to not bash, like, once in every eight hits, right? Roshan has fallen to the dungeon. Doesn't work against buildings, Dyer's stuff like that, so you can't like you can't really tick it that easily, stuff like that. So you, you said the only thing that's completely Dyer's random is the Chaos Knight. Uh, chaos Bolt specifically. Oh, Doppelganger is somewhat random as well, with where it is truly random actually, with where it puts the uh, uh, the, the illusions on the real hero. And also, Crystal Maiden's freezing field, the way that it's. Oh, hold on. Hold no, on. that's that's not completely random. It is. You do more damage at, uh, what was it, uh, 12 o'clock? Yeah. Oh, if the hero is on the 12 you, 1 o'clock. You are most likely to do the most damage on the either of the four compass directions. That is true. Oh, that, and that, the way that, why that is true is because uh, basically, Maiden ulti, it's like 70 explosions, right? But the explosions are generated, I think, counterclockwise, once per quadrant of that circle, right? So... Yeah, I, rem I remember seeing a video that the target on 1 o'clock would always get the most damage. Here, AM in a bit of trouble here. Ooh, caught by the edge of the chronosphere, lifted up by the torrent storm. Nothing a hell screen could do there. Yeah, maybe that that is true. I don't know if it's necessarily 1 o'clock. It's... Um, but it, it, there, there is a chance that, I mean, there's no chance you get hit by every explosion, but it's about standing in basically the wrong spot that will be canceled and hit by the most, as they will cancel or try to cancel the, uh, the, uh, life train, but that's not going to work. Yeah, there's only three true randoms. Uh, attack damage is random. Roshan's respawn timer is also truly random. Like I'm having some math class here right now with you. I, I actually, this is such a fun topic for me. I could go off for days on this. I'd be surprised Radiant's if Purge has never made a video or something attack. like this. Like, there's some evasion sources that are also pseudo random, so, you know. Yeah, but some of the stuff don't used to be made like this. They change it to pseudo random. And remember, certain things are not. Most things in the game are pseudo random because over a longer period of time, over a large data set, it is going to be the most balanced. Right. Bottom tower has fallen. Having true random give, can, can set up for some really unlucky things. Oh, careful here. Careful. AM. Oh, no. Another death. They got the tower. They're going to TP on back. That's why, like, that one uh, clip where RTZ gets bashed by uh, a Spirit Breaker, like, three or four times in a row, is hilarious. Because <laughs> it's such a low chance for that to happen. It's like he just won the lottery. Okay. Basically, he won the unlucky lottery. That's exactly right. You could just say that probably about Arteezy's entire career, but in that exact moment, that is very true. Very easy kill now. This is just getting out of hand. I mean, over the course of this map discussion, oh, late mail, Curtis Pro late mail. I've just been absolutely owning here. What is he? He's issuing stop commands, right? That's the way to stop that. Radiance mid tower yep. is under attack. Yeah, then he does. What else he could have been doing, to be honest? Maybe like dropping items into. No, I don't know. That's really. I always thought. Backpacking, for sure. backpacking the damage item. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, you were on back. This is DD Kunkka. They've already displaced him pretty heavily here. He is so tanky. The tidal wave now with the rumble. Good luck, Ogrebot, back for this. 
not even a tier two tower is going to be able to do much of a thing against him. Oh, no. this is void needs to help out on mana. You are back. There's an Aegis here on the face of Void, which will be brought now. Potentially turn around this game. They need something. I don't want, I don't want to sound dramatic. Not necessarily here now, but you just bob back on your ogre. A meat ogre. Didn't you buy back in game one as well, Irving? No, I think it's something that's a different game. Made it out of oh. Shackle Spear catching two. They're gonna have that boomerang now onto Zeneca. Can they nuke him in time? Yes, they can. They also pull back the over with the Thorn Strong. Down he goes. No buyback for him. It's a buyback on the mag. But yeah, it's just not gonna go well for him here. He doesn't have an RP. This is just disastrous. Still coming. What else? I mean, this is why. I mean, this is why you don't really see. Radiant soft carry heroes nowadays anymore. Like, you, you have to be able to fight uh, early. You, you, you can't just leave your team 4v5 and try to hope for the best, you know. Like, every every hero pool right now. So it's carry heroes that can actually be actively playing around the team. This is how Dota is. It's a 5v5 game. You can't just have one hero every team army. In this case, I mean, Heritage really showing his stuff, right? It's a little bit reminiscent of, of some, how someone like Heritage Nicola plays. Heritage. Heritage. Yeah, good effort there. And with the time dilation slow, Zanika's going to really struggle here. AM, nice. Manta dodge on the X mark. But it's two full lanes of barracks. I mean, again, 20, 24 minutes. Avertis Pro just taking their, their time, right? They are one game away. They have such a massive lead here. One game away now from qualifying to the main event. It's such a big move for these guys to be able to get there. Third, 26k the net worth lead now. Here we go. Trying again onto the Kunkka. He is farther alone, but this looks strikingly familiar to what we saw before. He's got the Bloodstone active now as well. The Rum buff to keep him healthy. He's already got the kill now onto two. That's not a support ogre. That's the mid ogre. He's already down for the count. Maiden is also dead. The GG is called. Congratulations, VT. They will join Team Spirits as the second representative here out of the Eastern European region for Dream League Season 22. Very well done. Yeah. Very well deserved. You know, they demonstrated a, a good understanding about drafts, a good understanding about what's important in the early game, the laning phase, and how they're rotating around the Twin Gates when they should be uh, pressuring the opponents. And I feel like each and every.